The concept of a spherical Earth has been widely accepted since the 3rd century BCE. Around this time, Eratosthenes calculated the circumference of the Earth and the tilt of its axis, both with remarkable accuracy, and also invented the first geographic coordinate system. His three-volume masterpiece, cleverly entitled Geography, was preserved alongside all great works of the time at the Library of Alexandria. Oopsie. OK, so his books were lost to history. But the coordinate system survived and is still in use today. Here's how it works. Imagine the Earth is split in half along its axis. The resulting circle has 360 degrees, divided into quarters of 90 degrees. The equator is, by definition, at zero degrees. The North Pole is thus at 90 degrees north and the South Pole at 90 degrees south. Every other point on the circle has a comparable angle value known as latitude. Now, let's split the Earth perpendicular to its axis. The resulting circle is divided into halves of 180 degrees. The prime meridian, whose location is fundamentally arbitrary, is by definition at zero degrees. All points on the circle have an angle value known as longitude, with the point opposite being simultaneously 180 degrees west and east. So far, so good. But where does the prime meridian go? The first person to use a consistent reference meridian was geographer Claudius Ptolemy. In his eight-book masterpiece, also entitled Geography, Ptolemy placed the prime meridian along what he called the Fortunate Isles, somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. The point was to place it west of the known world, since negative numbers were not yet in use. This notion stuck around for the next 1,500 years, with multiple Atlantic meridians used by cartographers. But eventually, empires happened. Thus, many prime meridians used in the modern era passed through major cities, including, but not limited to, Washington DC, Philadelphia, Lisbon, Madrid, London, Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Florence, Rome, Copenhagen, Alexandria, Jerusalem, Mecca, and Kyoto. Of particular note was London's prime meridian, established in the 18th century as passing through the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. It gained widespread use as the British Empire stretched across the world. By the late 19th century, over two-thirds of the world's commerce depended on sea charts that used the Greenwich Meridian. Still, the world needed a universal prime meridian to facilitate global navigation. So in October 1884, the International Meridian Conference took place. Of the 25 countries present, 22 voted in favour of adopting the Greenwich Meridian internationally. Two countries abstained from voting, including France, who continued to use the Paris Meridian for almost three more decades. Today, the Greenwich Observatory in London is a tourist attraction where every year 750,000 visitors pay £10 just to stand on the famous line and every day at sunset, a powerful laser shines across the London sky marking the line where east meets west. Except that's not true. You see, this isn't actually the prime meridian. Originally, meridians were defined relative to the spherical Earth's geometric centre. But GPS satellites orbit the Earth's centre of mass, which differs from its geometric centre since the Earth lacks uniform density and isn't even a perfect sphere, what with all the mountains and deep seas. Long story short, the real prime meridian is the International Reference Meridian, located 102 metres east of the Greenwich Meridian. But if the Greenwich Observatory isn't on the meridian, then what is? Let's find out. So that's the observatory, and that's the marking strip that tourists pay to stand on. Over there, we see Canary Wharf, one of London's financial business districts. And here we are, the Prime Meridian. As you can see, there is um, nothing here. Well, after combing through all of Greenwich Park, it turns out this dog waste bin is the only man-made object located on the Prime Meridian. You can find it behind the Ranger's house. So, if you ever plan on visiting the Prime Meridian in London, now you know not to waste 10 quid on the observatory ticket. Instead, get yourself a free photo of the prime dog waste bin. <laughs>